Today we have a very special guest, a rising star in the arbitration society, in the legal field in the Middle East, perhaps globally. Everyone can see here now on LinkedIn, on all the events you can go to, uh, writing articles like every day. <laughs> Uh, we have Salih Kolb, the head of arbitration group and partner at Habib Mulalu firm. We will be talking about her experience starting from Alexandria University as a law student to being starting in one of the top tier firms in the, in the region uh, at Zulfakar, being uh, 12 years in Baker McKenzie, becoming a partner in Baker McKenzie. Then, uh, as I said now, she's the head of arbitration group at Habib Mulalu firm. So please welcome my uh, guest Sally Kod today, our rising star. Hi Sally. Hi Zied, Zayek. Alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure to having you in our episode today. The pleasure is all mine. Wana farhan awni ma'aikum. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Sally. It's a uh, it's a really great pleasure. Albat dani anti al-fatra li fatid on LinkedIn or social media or all events or all the Sally Kolb is a speaker in Riyadh International Visit Week. Uh, Sally Kolb of Dubai Arbitration Week. Uh, Sally Kolb of uh, Arbitration Day in Egypt, ICC. And in London, you will be a speaker in sure. London this week, right. everywhere. Uh, uh, despite the fact Sally uh, graduated from uh, Gamat Skindreya. Uh, and you are young. Uh, not, not really, any of us. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be the head of UAE arbitration and partner for Habib al Law firm, one of the top firms in UAE. Yes, of course. Perhaps the region. El uh, Hasl. How this happened? Okay. Um, we can add that shwaya bil bil journey and how uh, did it start and uh, how I got there. Um Gama, so Mumkan why did you join law school? Why did I join law school? Oh, this is actually a very heartwarming question. Like for family reasons, and um uh Makanchile had the fil uh kanoon um illa can khali yani wa can tool il wat f uh Dubai u Babaya can uh lower can harbu and interest fil kura uh can captain in uh nedi l uh lumbi wami can captain nedi zamelik fal il it gehet can it uh shwaya f babin il uh الجيش وما بين الكورة بس ليه أنا حبيت القانون إنه وأنا صغيرة جدا كنت بتفرج على برنامج ما أعرفش تفتكره ولا لا كان اسمه برنامج خلف الأسوار okay. behind the cell okay. <تصفيق> أيوة <تصفيق> وكنت بتابعه كان بيجي كل يوم سبت Okay. وكنت بتابع قوي ازاي البريزنتر بتقابل الناس وبتتكلم معاهم وبتفهم ازاي ان كان في الهيومن اليمنت في الموضوع ان تحاول تفهم يعني وات ليد ذيم تو تو جيت تو يعني تو وات ذي ديد يعني ان تيرمز اوف الكرايم ده كان بيجيب الكريمنلز ولعب بقى مغطي وشهم بالظبط كده وبتحاول تفهم ايه اللي حصل okay. و... فا اي اولويز اي واز اولويز اندر ذا امبريشن انه وين اي جرو اب انه اي كان يعني بي سمثينج هيلبفل تو ذا سوسايتي وان انا اقدر ان انا ادافع عن الناس واخليهم ما يرتكبوش وكده ف بدات معايا كده ف اي فاوند ماي سيلف انه ام سو انتو يعني واتشنج شوز ريفولفينج اراوند هيلبينج ذا سوسايتي وبعدين ريدينج انتو ريدينج واز ون اوف ذا ثينجز اند درافتينج جورنالز من وانا صغيره كانت حتى في الدايريز يعني كنت بتكلم اقول مثلا لو شفت حد تعبان لو شفت مثلا حاجه عايزه اصلحها في السوسايتي كانت جايه في ان فيري انسنت واي لغايه ما كبرت دخلت كليه حقوق ومن اسكندرية أنا أصلا من اسكندرية فدخلت جامعة اسكندرية وكانت I just felt that it was growing in me يعني القانون بكل ال كان عندنا دكاترة قوية جدا فا I felt myself so into law وابتدت الباشن بتاعتي مع التحكيم كمان تزيد يعني كان بيبقى فيه كورسز بناخدها أثناء الجامعة نفسها طب نعم. الاول الرغبات بتاعتك كانت كلها لو من البدايه صح؟ كانت كلها لو كلها لو آه. ما كانش آه. عندك اي تفكير تاني اوبشن تاني نو نو ات واز لو اول ذا واي والحمد لله ربنا اكرمني بيها في جامعه اسكندريه 
ودخلتها وكانت ال ال يعني اول يوم جامعه ده كان اتشيفمنت كبير ده كان ايوه جدا وخلاص انا وصلت مكان انا عايزاه جدا أوكي. جدا كنت فرحانه جدا جدا و وكنت حابه قوي ان انا يعني اي برسو ال 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 يعني الليجل نوليدج ان ديفرنت اسبكتس كلها بس حسيت ان يعني ثرو اوت انه اي هاف there's something is is sort of attracting me into dispute resolution okay فالمهم معدت الحمد لله اربع سنين من الجامعه و تخرجت كان في حد معين في الجامعه دكتور معين someone was mentoring you في حد صراحة كلهم كانوا دكاترة يعني مش مش عادية يعني من يعني يعني من عشان ما اقولش اسماء واسيب ناس تانية حقيقي كانوا احنا من كنا دفعة كنا دايما بنقول ربنا كرمنا بدكاترة من 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 كم النولج والاخلاق وقد ايه ذي هاد ذا بيشنس ان هم يدرسوا لنا وي وير فيري بريفيليجد فالحقيقة كانوا أربع سنين طبعا دكتور محمد الفقي يعني كان كمان دكتوري قوي جدا وكان كان كمان عميد الجامعه هناك هو فيري سبورتيف تو مي دكتور نادر ابراهيم uh, كل يعني كان حقيقي عشان لو لو فضلت اقول الاسماء uh, كلهم كانوا حقيقي ناس uh, اقوياء جدا جدا اه دكتور نادر ابراهيم انا عارفه في قطر دلوقتي ايوه ايوه, أيوة مظبوط وكان في دكتور مناس خاتشدوريان كمان الله يرحمه هي واز كمان فيري فيري برومننت فكانوا حقيقي كلهم دكاتره كانوا كانوا محتوينا كلنا وكان كانوا دفعتنا كمان الحقيقه كان كان دفعتنا فيها ناس من من اقوى يعني كلهم دلوقتي في الشركات الدوليه وفي مجال القضاه والنيابه الاداريه كلهم زمايلي فكان الحقيقه كمان كانت دفعه مشرفه يعني الحمد لله طب قبل ما نعدي السكيب مرحله الجامعه كده فتره الجامعه كانت عامله ازاي كانت معتمده اكتر على المذاكره كان يعني ايه اللي خلاكي تحبي الاربيتريشن تعرفي عنه هديك كده مرحلة بس انت اول ما تخرجتي رحتي وانا اوف ذا توب فيرمز ان ايجيبت قعدتي في الفكار دي حاجات برضو مش مش طبيعيه مش سهله ان حد جامعه اسكندريه يبتدي في توب تير فيرم ان ايجيبت ايه اللي حصل في الجامعه كانت عامله ازاي؟ وات هابند والله الجامعه طبعا كانت كانت صعبه يعني كانت محتاجه كوميتمنت ان احنا نبقى اصلا ان انت يو ار ان ذا ميدل اوف بيبل كانوا في يعني توب نوتش اوريدي ستودنتس وناس اقوياء جدا في القانون وكانوا كمان ايكولي فيري passionate about it كان فكرة انه احاول اني اجتهد كنت كانت حاجة يعني it was in me اني اني احاول اطلع الجامعة وانا مستفيدة على قد ما اقدر فطبعا كنت بحضر كل المحاضرات كنت ماشي زي يعني زي الكتاب ما بيقول نرجع نحضر يعني كل المحاضرات بعد كده ارجع البيت اذاكر كان في طبعا ايام نطلع رحلات مع الجامعة ف we were able to balance the hard working كمان مع ان احنا to make sure ان we're living and we're strengthening our يعني collegiality مع 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 زمايلي كانت احلى ايام ايه اللي حصل بعد كده انه بعد الجامعه طبعا ما خلصت حصلت في اسكندريه انه الانديانا يونيفرستي واز كومينج انتو ايجيبت وكانت اول جامعه امريكيه تقدم الماسترز ديجري اند تو هاف ا كامبس انسايد الكسندريا نفسها وير اي واز بيزد يعني فطبعا ات واز ا جريت يعني اوبورتونيتي انه تو فيرذر ديفلوب my master's degree and to get further knowledge يعني in the field واللي حصل انه الحمد لله اتقدمت قدمت فيها وكنت من اول دفعه اللي اتقبلت في في انديانا يونيفرستي في اسكندريه وحصل ان بارلل ان جاء سكولرشيب من جامعه اسكندريه مع ات واز ان اكسشينج بروجرام ما بين امريكا وما بين جامعه اسكندريه انه ياخدوا جروب اوف ستودنتس من جامعه اسكندريه وجامعه القاهره وجامعه اسيوط يعملوا اكسشينج بروجرام يروحوا انترن في الكونغرس في واشنطن ف it happened and I was going to the US I, I, I got approved في انديانا so I did my masters في امريكا وما بين مصر وما بين امريكا given that I was already there لسه متخرج على طول لسه ما بعدها بس لا يعني مش انا اتخرجت في 2006 الموضوع ده بدا اه في اواخر 2006 قبل ما تشتغلي اه اه لا يعني لا كنت كنت اوريدي بعد ما ما اتخرجت كنت ابتديت اتمرن اوريدي في اسكندريه في مكتب اسمه نادوري نحاس كان مكتب جميل قوي 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 هناك المهم جت بقى الموضوع ده فكنت ما بين الدراسه وما بين ان انا باخد الخبره يعني كمان هناك في 
في الناضوري وحصلت انه ات ذا اند بقى اوف ال ال رحتي انترنشن في الكونجرس تحكي لنا عنها شوية كده اه ات واز جريت اي واز بارت اوف of the House of Representatives of Congressman uh, Michael McMahon and was very privileged in that I was in all the Senate uh, meetings and I see the process of them issuing the laws and internal policies of the U.S. and listening to the politics at the time and, and the situation uh, worldwide came in the region. It stayed with me, so it was supposed to be only for one month. But uh, there was an extension for some of the students, so I was, alhamdulillah, lucky to get uh, three more, three, any three consecutive at all in all. Fiha, how many seven months? Okay. Ah. You didn't start in politics, then you started in. I was like, you started, but I was told you started in the law, so I stayed in it. And they're always related. I always feel that in politics and uh, and law, they sort of uh, they, there's a form of integration between them. So. Uh, انت كنت نيرد يا سالي؟ كنت نيرد؟ عايزه اقول لك نو، يعني مثلا نيرد بمعنى كنت مجتهده، يعني مش نيرد، يعني في في ناس نيرد يعني مثلا عندي زمايلي اي نو يختاروكي تو جو تو كونجرس، بعدين يختاروكي تعمل اكستنشن فور عشان كنت مجتهده، اي دونت ثينك بيكوز اي واز سمارت او في ناس اقوى مني يعني في انا بحس انه اكتر انه They can they can see that there's a commitment inside of me and that I'm serious about what I do. Can I have some difficulty in the university? Why can the students say that we're not just talking about the professional or the professional, but also the human? Because I'm a young girl, I'm actually born in Dubai. وكنت لما اتولدت كانت الكلام كله زي ما انت عارف ان دبي بيتكلموا بالانجلش. جيت مصر لما اتعلمت اللغه كنت باجي في الصيف وقت الصيف مع اهلي فطبعا قرايبي وكان حتى عمي يعني كان بيتزعل قوي ازاي انا يعني مش بتكلم بقول بابايا ازاي يا سعيد سعيد ما بتتكلمش انجلش بس ما بتتكلمش عربي فاخدت اللغه بس كانت انت عارف ان لغه القانون صعبه. <تصفيق> فكان بالنسبه لي اني كنت بعمل دبل ذا افورت انه اي اتاكد اني بقول اللغه مظبوط بكتب الامتحان مظبوط ما يبقاش عندي كانت الدكاتره بتحس ان في الكلام اقول الفاتحه يعني مش في اماكنها حسوا ان انا العربي اللغه اللغه نفسها مش مش اقوى حاجه فساعدوني ودعموني وابتديت اذاكر اكتر وكانوا بيسهلوا بدل ما ما تبقى السامريز من الكتاب نفس نفسه اقراها كانوا يساعدوني يقولوا لي سهلوا اللغه ان هي تبقى ريزونيتس ويل انه اي كان اكسبرس ات ايزلي فالحمد لله كان عندي فير ان انا دايما اسمع ناس تدخل كليه حقوق بتقعد تعيد في السنين وكده كان عندي الفير دي لان انا عمري يعني يعني ما كنتش احب ان انا كنت عايزه اطلع مع زمايلي كمان اللي اتعلقت بيهم واللي عايزه اطلع معاهم التدرج المظبوط فالحمد لله ربنا سهل وعديت اربع سنين جامعه وكنت بجيب برضو درجات كويسه في الانجليش اكتر من العربي ايوه بس <تصفيق> الحمد لله اتخرجت وبعد ما اتخرجت جت بقى موضوع الماسترز ديجري انديانا وات هابند نيكست بقى ان في اواخر الكورسز في انديانا اخدتها في القاهره فكنت باجي جامعة القاهرة. Okay. فلما جيت جامعة القاهرة طبعا دكتور محمد عبد الوهاب يعني از از ا فيري برومنت بروفيسور هناك فابتديت ان انا اعرفه وابتدى ان هو هي واز اوف كورس فيري جريت سبورت اوف انديانا بروجرام ات ذا تايم. فخلصت ال ال يعني ال انديانا ات ذا تايم وتخرجت من معهد دفعتي هناك في في جامعه القاهره كان كان اجمل احتفال وكان بالصدفه مين موجود هناك كانت دكتوره منى ذو الفقار. سو اي واز ذير وطبعا ماي مام كمان يعني هقول لك بمنتهى يعني كده الطبيعيه انه وات هابند وماي مام واز ذير وزي اي ام راحت وقالت لها دكتوره منى انا بنتي سالي وبتتخرج وهي زميله الدكتور وادوا لها ادوا لها فرصه يعني هو لو تقدروا بس ان انتوا اوف كورس دكتور منى من زمان شي واز فيري فيري سبورتيف يعني جدا فعرفت مامتي على طول وعرفتنا اون ذا سبوت على دكتور محمد وانا اوريدي اي نيو هيم فمامي كلمت بقى ساعتها و... و... وعملت الانترفيو مع دكتور محمد ومع دكتور فراس تاني يوم على طول وكنت حتى ساعتها يعني كنت لسه بحكي ان انا كنت رايحه لابسه لبس عادي اللي هو شميز وبنطلون ما كنتش بقى رايحه بروبر سوت بس they were very understanding welcoming and very embracing عملت الانترفيو و... وقبلوني. Well, your mom has a 
هي الحقيقه جدا إيه لا ده من وانا اصلا من بدايه المدرسه من وانا صغيره سو ام ترولي جريتفل ثرو اوت هي وقفت معايا في حاجات كتير وهم دي هم عشان كمان ناس بطبيعتهم بسيطه ودي اندرستاند دي توك هير يعني دي 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 هيلث يعني دي وونتد تو نيرتشر الموضوع ده انه تو تو جيف هير اند تيل هير اتس اوكي ليت هير كام وعملت الانترفيو ربنا سهلها واشتغلت على طول جدا 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 اي بين ريلي يعني اونورد اني اشتغل معاهم كمان فوات هابند اني اشتغلت بقى خش بقى في المرحله بتاعت بعد الجامعه والماسترز والشغل كده فهي سالي كان اول حاجه خالص عملتيها مامتك عملتها اللي هي عرفتك على دكتور منى رحت دكتور منى بنتي وقابلتي تاني يوم على طول دكتور محمد ودكتور فراس اه على طول كانوا كانوا كمان موجودين في الجراديويشن دي فروحت لهم وعملت الانترفيو وكانوا طبعا يعني زي اخذوا بايدي لان انا لسه متخرجه وكانوا شايفين ان ان شاء الله يعني انه ذي انفست ان ذا يونجر جنريشن فاخذت الحمد لله الاوبورتونيتي اني اشتغل معاهم وكنت في التيم الدايركت بتاع دكتور محمد سو ات واز ا جريت يعني اوبورتونيتي تو تو جيت تو ورك فيرست هاند معاه سبحان الله كل الجنريشن دوت تلاقي الستارت بتوع الجنريشن كل دكتور محمد ليهم ليه تاثير في حياتهم كده ات ذا تايم بقى فكره انك لسه رحتي توب تير فيرم اه وشغال مع دكتور محمد ميبي ذا بيست ان ذا اربيتريشن كان ايه احساسك اول يوم في المكتب ده دوت؟ زي احساس طبعا انه التوتر ان اول يوم شغل عايزه ان انا يعني يعني اثبت نفسي بالشخص يبقى كونفدنت ولا خايف لسه؟ لا انا بصراحه كنت خايفه يعني كانت عشان بتعامل مع بيج نيمز و كنت مقدره الاوبورتونيتي انه ذيس از ان اوبورتونيتي فور مي تو ليرن اند تو تو بيلد ا كارير ان اربيتريشن ويمكن الحاجه اللي فادتني والحاجه اللي حسيت از اي ريفلكت باك انه اف اف سم ون ريلي وونتس تو اسباير تو بيكم يعني ا سبيشالست ان اربيتريشن لازم يبدا من الاول خالص في ال في التحكيم انه تو جيت ذا اوبورتونيتي تو ورك اند تو جوين ا جود اربيتريشن تيم تو ستارت ذا اكسبوجر من البدايه يعني تو ديل مع ال ال زي ما بنقول الجراوند ورك بتاعت التحكيم انه تو نو ذا بيسكس اباوت بندلنج اباوت درافتنج تيرمز اوف ريفرنس اباوت اباوت ذا بروسيجر اباوت هاو ذا هيرنج وركس الحاجات اللي هي اللوجيستكس قبل بقى طبعا بيجي الوقت انه يو نيد تو امبروف يور درافتنج يو نيد تو نو هاو تو درافت يو نيد تو نو هاو تو بي براجماتيك ان يور ابروتش كل ده بيجي بس يو نيد تو ستارت يو نيد تو نو ات اول بحيث انه از يو بروجريس ان يور كارير ما تقولش والله اه انا انا سينيور بس ما اعرفش اعمل بندلنج انا سينيور بس اي كانوت مثلا ميك اني كروس ريفرنسنج لان التحكيم از اول اباوت يعني فوليوم اند فوليوم اوف دوكيومنتس So you need to know, you need to know the papers by heart, you need to be familiar with them, you need to be confident with the procedure, حتى with the numbering of exhibits, بالحاجات اللي هي, it can sound, you know, uh, lawyers don't need, really need to do that, but that's not right. يعني أنا, يعني أنا وكذا حد من ال- ال- examples اللي بشوفهم اللي وصلوا دلوقتي big names, were all uh, paralegals and were all juniors and they all did it all, they all did the groundwork. before getting the opportunity of having the liability of drafting first cuts of submissions ولا ولا witness statements or what not okay. so it was it was طبعا a great uh, opportunity i was i was of course like as any يعني, new joiner uh, worried and i wanted to prove myself but they were also equally very supportive to me they took my hand and uh, the exposure of cases كانت مش عاديه و- وطبعا انا كنت ما يعني ان ان يعني embraced within a, an environment that was very uh, يعني heavy knowledge what clear كده advice steps لو حد stepping in your foot ولسه بيستارت كان بدايه joining an arbitration team اه oh. what he or she should expect يشتغل يعمل ايه؟ يشتغل يعني حسب هو يشتغل a lot of working hours يعني حسب هو يذاكر حاجات ايه نوع الشغل اللي هو ممكن يشتغله ايه اللي يخليه كويس اوكي okay. if he's lucky enough to work في ذو الفقار مع دكتور محمد في the arbitration team بتاعه مفروض يعمل ايه ايه اللي يخليه شخص يستمر وينجح في الاربتريشن ان هو يوصل ليبقى 
بارتنر ان هيد اوف اربيتريشن الى تاب تير فيرم ان يو اي اي وود سي كوميتمنت اند هافينج ذا فيث ذات يو كان دو ات يعني انا كانت من الحاجات اللي اللي حصلت او اللي سمعتها زمان ان دايما في الفيلد اوف اربيتريشن كانوا دايما يقولوا ده مش فيلد للبنات ده فيلد okay. للولاد انت مش هتقدري تو سستين لانه لانه اتس ا فيري زيها زي اي مجال في القانون يعني المهنه نفسها اتس اتس فيري ديماندينج ذيرز ا لوت اوف بريشر ان ات ذيرز ا لوت اوف ستريس انفولفد ان ات سو ات 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 تيكس ا لوت اوف كمان اوف اوف تايم اند اند كوميتمنت اند انرجي اند ديديكيشن ف فلازم تبقى عارف انه you're getting into something that is serious that would require your time and energy to be devoted to مش هنقول بقى انه working long hours I don't want to say you need to expect to work long hours لانه we don't, we, don't want, we don't want to normalize something that is unhealthy يعني انا شايفة انه throughout what I experienced personally ان انا كنت بروح وقت شغلي في normal working hours from 9 to 6 And I used to, f- to work throughout these working hours only. I used to have my one hour break time. I used to take the target. بتاعتي. I used to get my billable hours. And I used to enhance my exposure. I didn't have to go every day in the school until 12 or 1 o'clock. Yani I was efficient. I made sure that I, I remain focused. I get the, the, the most out of what I have at, at hand. So to work long hours, it does come, unfortunately, with the... With, um, with the nature of the job, although there's a lot of understanding دلوقتي و- a lot of awareness in the legal community يعني, uh, worldwide إنه where everyone is pushing for work-life balance إنه it's no longer anymore uh, هنروح نبات كل ويكند في المكتب و- وحننسى حياتنا وحننسى ولادنا لا ال- مش كده يعني إنه it's more about working efficiently and clients كمان يعني clients are becoming more um, more knowledgeable and understanding of how billables work يعني when they see the time sheets and time entries ساعات and we don't give it much attention نقول انا هحط كده وخلاص مش ههتم قوي بالناراتيف of my time but this as i grew throughout the years i learned that the most important thing the method of communication between an associate and the client is the time sheet is the time entry is is a way to build the client's trust in you Because you're, you're showing that client what you did exactly on, on the matter that you're dealing with. So if you say, for example, I've been sitting six hours reviewing the file. Really? You're yeah, right. And what is this? And this is, this is not how you build the, the bond with the client. This is not how you build the gravitas, the trust. You won't even... What I've learned, really, it's all about... building this personal connection with clients so making sure that you that that client will know i'll reach out to sally i'll reach out to sara to whoever in the market because they know that these are people that are reliable and people that they can trust so if i can just get a step back and say it's very important to start with the timesheets the the, the 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 very simple method of just showing the client what you are doing break down what you are doing be reasonable in the time that you're spending if something that doesn't require a two hours time and then you end up putting seven hours this is not a way to build a long-standing relationship with the client so really it's not about how many hours i spend in the office and i think we've learned this best during covid we were all forced to change the way of our lives. We were all stuck at home and we all had to work. I recall during the year of uh, COVID, we were all in lockdown and it was the most profitable year for our team. We were focused. We knew that, you know, we have to, we have to survive and we have to survive where we are. So we stayed at home, we didn't go to the office, and we were very efficient. And we were, it was the most profitable year out of all years. So really the message here, it's not about how much time you spend on a certain task. It's how efficient you get to it. It's how efficient you can get along and complete it. Not about dumping hours and ty- dumping... But I want to say that being efficient actor, in in this market, people work long hours, كتير قوي. فهل اللي بيخليكي 
تو ميك ذا ورك لايف بالانس ودي حاجه كتير ناس عايزاها دلوقتي زي ما انت بتقولي حاجه مهمه وبتختلف جينيريشن uh, بتختلف هل انت كنت بروفيشنال اكتر منهم ناس بتقعد اورز كتيره دول هل هم بيعملوا ايه غلط uh, ليه انت طالع 9 6 والناس بتبات في في المكتب وير از ذا تراك اللي انا اوصل اكون بارتنر في بيكر ماكنزي بعد كده حبيب المله اوصل ده كله وانا افشنت ومحافظ على ورك لايف بالانس ازاي عملت كده I think I think it really comes down to the team and to making sure you can fit in very nicely within your team لانه في الاخر احنا we know انه يعني انه ايد الواحده مش بتسقف يعني so we need to make sure that we're in harmony we're integrated وانا throughout the years and I was very privileged to work with uh, with great team members from uh, juniors to seniors And of course, يعني, things are not always rosy in the garden. يعني, أكيد, I've encountered people who are managers who are very يعني, hard. وكل, بس in, in, I think the trick is, is, is to try to get along and to remain focused on, on what you want to become. Okay. يعني, أنا, الآخر, يعني, I can end up in, uh, يعني, in the office. I, أكيد, I have my friends come and I want to have coffee, I want to enjoy, and I've had great times with them. But I think it all comes down to allocation of time, and I think just keeping in mind the commitment to your deadlines. And one of the things that, if I can, you know, praise myself on based on 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 great feedback that I received from superiors in the field is that I never missed a deadline. I always ensured that I'm going to meet this deadline. And if I can't meet a deadline, it's not like I'm not a superwoman. There are times where. instances happen where you're forced you cannot uh, you know things just fall out of the way and you know that you're not going to meet a deadline flagging it just having the attitude of of not putting anyone under the spot not uh, not cornering your partner who's expecting a draft to come for example uh, on uh, on Thursday before the weekends change our, our weekends in Dubai was Friday and Saturday so I don't end up sending a, a draft to the partner to review uh, at uh, at 7 p.m. right before the weekend starts so just having this um, understanding and uh, and being mindful of other people's situations and being transparent saying if you can do something just be open about it because at the end of the day your job is to make the partner or the senior lawyer easier right it's for it's for everyone's sake you want to finish the draft so that they come back to you in time not with a lot of comments and even if they did it's a, it's a learning process for you so it, it's all one person delivering delivering to the other so it co- it all comes back to the team remaining focused and uh, and keeping very close attention to your deadlines جبتي حلول في ثلاث حاجات التايم شيت اي ثينك اتس ا بروبلم لللوير كيوتك فدي حاجه لازم بيها تحل جدا uh, also deadlines we always have this problem with clients and even internally فدول uh, very specific and uh, دي حاجات الكلاينتس تايم اند تايم اجين يعني نو ماتر هاو يو بروجريس ان يور كارير اف اف يو جو تو اني ان هاوس كونسل ذا فيرست ثينج دي وود سي بليز انشور يو بروفايد اكوريت تايم شيتس ذس از ذس از هاو ذس از ذا ريبيوتيشن اوف ذا فيرم ذا نيم از ويل ذات يو ريبريزنتينج سو اف يو اند اب نوت ريلي ابريشياتينج ذا ذا ريسبونسيبيليتي يو هاف ان ذات ريجارد ذا اذر فيري سيمبل ثينج ذات وي كيب اون از ويل you know hearing from clients because clients are people who keep us going right at the end of the day we're ser- we're serving the the companies the private public so it comes down to very simple requests from them and you just acknowledge an email if i'm sending you an email and telling you look this is an a matter that i want you to look into you can just sleep on it uh three, four days and then oh okay افتكر دلوقتي انه i'll know You, you need to do it on the spot just to say a very simple word thank you we confirm receipt we will review and revert just one liner it serves the purpose these are all very simple tips that i've learned throughout my career that have helped strengthen the trust of clients in me and in my colleagues and in the team in general okay we want to start the story from the beginning two things like what should we expect from partners and seniors when you're a junior or your first uh, year at the firm for instance do you expect like do you expect five minutes from dr Muhammad in the month one hour 
should we read between the lines if I'm working in a team as a junior? When I will have more time, maybe when I'm a mid-level associate, maybe I'm a senior associate, when was the first time that you deal with the client directly? Like, I want the story step by step for someone who's joining the field of arbitration. Sure. And these are actually very uh, important topics that you've touched upon. Um, I think in terms of expecting, don't expect anything. Okay. Like what I've learned, you know, if you want something, just go ask for it. Because at the end of the day, partners are very busy. And uh, if you're talking like you're mentioning a name of someone that we know is tw busy 24-7. So getting a time from Dr. Muhammad, he, he's always there. Like if you knock the door, you'll find him. But don't expect him to come and tell you, oh, you know, we're going to discuss this topic today. He'll never do it because he has a lot of things on his plate. And this is something that I've seen from working as well with um, Dr. Habib. Dr. Habib. At some point, I was working as an administrative secretary to Dr. Habib, to Dr. Muhammad, with Dr. Hani Sareed Zin, Dr. Tariq Riyadh. So there were a lot of. Uh, Tell me more about that. So, how it started in when I was um, young, there was. There was um, everyone, of course, wants to get the exposure of dealing in arbitration as counsel and as, a, as, a, as arbitrator. So uh, there's a lot of international uh, desire to promote younger generations. And one way to promote them is to get to act as an administrative secretary. So given that I already was working in the field of arbitration in teams that had you know, gurus in arbitration, I had the, the opportunity to serve as administrative secretary to these arbitrators. Okay. And this helped me a lot because my exposure was not only about uh, uh, knowing the, the, the ins and outs of, uh, of arbitration from a council perspective, but also from an arbitrator perspective. And this is something that I would say because I, I, I get a lot of questions from um, younger uh, lawyers asking, how do we get uh, arbitrator uh, appointments? It really comes down to reaching out to, first of all, members of your team. If you're an arbitration team, see, even, even it doesn't necessarily have to be partners. Seniors now are all, uh, are all acting as arbitrators. There's a lot of um, uh, move and, and uh, approaches being uh, applied worldwide to promote the younger generation. So it's not like back at the time when uh, arbitrators need to be, you know, the the old and white uh, herd people anymore. It's not like that. So go to the team, try to even contact uh, arbitration centers. Arbitration centers are now very much welcoming to getting uh, administrative secretaries on board. This is the first element that I found very helpful personally in getting or starting to reflect my name with the arbitration centers. Yes. So I've got it through DIAC. Uh, my first appointments was through DIAC. Yes. And it came, it, it came back and I was very, very, I was, I was, I was uh, still an associate even. I wasn't even senior. So, and it all came from trying to um, contacting the center, saying if there are any courses that, that you know they offer that you want to attend, if there's any administrative secretary um, opportunities that you can take. These are all um, chances for you to you know uh, raise your profile and get the get the centers to to know you. And of course, if you have an opportunity to act as administrative secretary, it just comes naturally. Um, your name is is there, and then as the time goes by, you start to get um, arbitrator appointments. And what is interesting was that DIAC, the ICC, LCIA, DIFC, LCIA as well at the time, Kursika, of course, they all had the uh, desire to promote the younger uh, generation. So the, the, the institution itself had the, uh, the commitment to, to search out and look who are the people who are standing in the market, who are the people who deserve an opportunity. And it starts with the most small cases. And it always started with me. When I, st I was very grateful because I got my, uh, my uh, appointments through great institutions, DIAC and ICC. What 
what then happened at the time and was really great is that I started getting also appointments through colleagues in the market. So yes, colleagues can be your competitors, but at the same how, same time, they can be your great uh, supporters. So uh, yeah. how long it took to uh, from first ap- applying for the arbitration centers, uh, then to be appointed as arbitrator? I would say on average between three to four years. Okay, from applying as an administrative secretary to be appointed as a arbitrator four years only. I mean, starting to become getting getting appointments as an administrative secretary is relatively straightforward because in any event, tribunals want helping hands to support them. Yes. So it it just going out and reaching out to someone who you feel is is a great. Uh, mentor or great arbitrator in the market you can just uh, you know drop them an email say look i'm here i'm available but three four years experience as administrative secretary is enough to get you appointed as an arbitrator. yes because at the end of the day what's what's um, what we're seeing at the moment is that the nature of the arbitration disputes itself is not it, it's not it doesn't have to always be very complicated it doesn't have to be very large. There are very straightforward claims ranging from, uh, but that's not the norm. Sometimes simple claims can become very complicated ones. Okay. But what, what I want to say is that there are relatively straightforward procedures that can help as a, te- as a test at the beginning for someone to start progressing and becoming an arbitrator. Another element as well, and it's something that actually institutions are uh, promoting, is that when it comes to three-member tribunals, to give some diversity, they're making sure that they appoint, that there is a, um, a balance. So you'll have someone who is very senior in the arbitration field and someone who's starting. And you, can, you cannot really imagine that how helpful having such um, a panel in practice because the new joiner or the new arbitrator wants to prove him or herself so they end up actually being very supportive to the chairperson of the tribunal they end up drafting the emails they end up uh, reviewing procedural orders or even preparing first drafts of them so it all helps for the better efficiency and progression of the arbitration process itself and i've seen it in practice in 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 cases of in cases where i've sat as an arbitrator so it's this uh, this harmony, this collegiality, um, very helpful, yeah. Okay. It's like a first-hand experience to be an arbitrator from the beginning. So either through getting a three mem- becoming a member in three member as a, as a co-arbitrator, because as a co-arbitrator as well, you're sort of laid back. So all the actions are done by the chairperson. So it's great exposure. You see how the chairperson deals with procedural issues, what types of complexities come into play, both on substance, on the merits, from witnesses. So it's it's a great opportunity, of course. And really, just let it be. When I pushed or when I started arbitration, it wasn't all about uh, making sure I get an arbitrator appointment now, now, now. It just came along. It, it fell. You just feel that everything falls in place at the right time. You just do your thing. You you show and you make people feel that you're really committed. You have the passion. I always feel that it's all about passion, making them feel that you're really into it. You really appreciate what you're doing. It is it, it resonates with people uh, very well. Okay. Yeah. Tai Sadi, as the uh, head of arbitration of your Eve Habib Model Law Firm, partner and head of arbitration. Would you simplify for us arbitration and simplify for us the role of arbitrator and the law of the, the role of the lawyer in the arbitration? What is the difference? Sometimes I'm confused how you be both like arbitrator in some cases and a counsel in some cases. Uh, arbitration field is so passionate, everyone is passionate, like very active uh, practice in the law profession full of events, conferences, publishing. You write a lot, you love to write, you have a lot of articles in the field. It's a lot to do. And I want to simplify it for people who are seeking uh, arbitration lawyers. Uh, Non-lawyers are seeking arbitrator to appoint arbitrator. I want to simplify the role for them, what they should expect from the arbitrator, when they come to arbitration, what is arbitration, why it's... uh, 
because you work in different jurisdiction in UAE, uh, in Saudi, in Egypt, and why sometimes you go for arbitration, why we don't go for the normal uh, litigation, litigation in the courts. Can you simplify it for us, like for a baby who won't understand it? Sure, I'll try my best. Uh, as you said, it's a very uh, huge field, but I think uh, the simplest, uh, and as we all know, like going back to basics, uh, arbitration is uh, um, one form of an alter alternative means of dispute resolution. Um, private companies and international companies generally opt into um, going to arbitration, given that there's a lot of uh, benefits that comes to it. Um, Why do we need an alternative for dispute resolution? For a number of reasons, if we're if we're talking about a comparison between arbitration and ordinary court procedure, one of the major benefits of going to arbitration is confidentiality. So international companies, you know, disputes can sometimes involve uh, major technicalities of the in uh, of the uh, IPs uh, or the know-hows of a certain company. So keeping all of this information confidential is isn't. Uh, isn't can, something can this in the courts? the court is uh, is public the moment you go to court your case is heard in public yes. so this is one of the benefits where parties opt into going to arbitration as opposed to litigation is to maintain the confidentiality of their project maintain the confidentiality of of their ip of their trade secret so this is one aspect. There are other aspects, for example, um, language, for example. There, uh, international companies often deal in, uh, in English. Um, and this is like an international language. English combines, it's basically the language of, of the business worldwide. So going to um, um, a private means of dispute resolution, as opposed, for example, to coming to courts in the region which operate in Arabic. So instead of, you know, uh, bearing the pain of translating all the contract terms, all the communications between the parties, you end up already in a platform where arbitration or the procedure can be conducted in English. Okay. The other aspect as well, and one of the major benefits of arbitration is you get to choose the qualities of your arbitrator because disputes as, you know, are very complicated. Uh, and, and very diverse, so you can find very, very specific uh, types of, of industries that would require um, certain background and, and technical information to be there. So being able to go and to say, look, uh, going to the institution or, or considering the arbitrators from the field, you can always tell, I want someone with a specific uh, background, for example, in the oil and gas or in a certain uh, computer programming. So in cryptocurrency, for example, which is uh, one of the, the major topics at the moment, someone to understand these type of niche businesses is key. And it is one of the main benefits that comes with arbitration. The other benefit, just to simplify, as opposed to comparing arbitration to litigation, is uh, is recoverability of costs. So court proceedings or arbitration proceedings can be quite expensive. So one of the benefits that arbitrations provide to users or to clients is their ability to recover whatever lawyer fears, uh, fees they've paid, whatever administrative fees they've paid. So this is one of the main benefits uh, where the, the institutional rules and the procedural laws empower tribunals to cater for this problem. I don't, and, I don't get that really because what I understand, what I know that arbitration is far way expensive than it is. going to litigation. and. It costs a lot of money, and what what you're trying to do, like how the clients think of ROI, return of investment, if I go to arbitration or litigation. But now you're saying arbitration is much more better for uh, arbitration financials. is expensive. So we're not trying yes. to say that arbitration is uh, it's is cheaper. more expensive. It's, than, more, it's yeah. way more expensive. Yes. Than, this is a given, and if anyone says otherwise, then I, I'd, yes. I'd like to hear her experience. But from what we've seen, arbitration is definitely more expensive but one of the benefits of it is no matter how you're, you're at the end of the day, day paying for the benefit that you'll get at the end you're paying for the qualities of the arbitrator you're paying for the institution that will uh, supervise the entire arbitration process so you're you're, you're paying for the service that you're going to get from the expertise of the tribunal and that the you're time gonna frame of course and is. the time frame and all and all the time of course the arbitrations can take uh, very long years from from usually as we say from six months to a year but we end up in arbitrations that can span for over three or five years so 
But in litigation, it take much more time. It, not necessarily. Some and courts in Dubai at the moment, for example, or in the region more generally, are becoming more and more aware about um, uh, dealing with the claims in a very swift yes. manner. And we've seen it as well in legislations that came uh, recently out in uh, in the UAE in relation to enforcement of awards, for example, and enforcement to foreign awards. Now the the judge has uh, five days only. The execution the judge has five days to to hear an application for enforcement. Yes. So there's a lot of awareness from the courts. Sometimes courts can be even faster than arbitration. But we're talking. That's why we always say there's no one size fits all. When you go to arbitration, one case would require arbitration. The other can be relatively straightforward. The contracts are ready. In Arabic, there's not a lot of complexities. You will not require a lot of experts to be involved because the dispute is not too complicated. Okay. So you can end up at the end going to court because it's cheap. And back to the part of recovering costs. Yes. yes. So we always say in one of the ways that we're promoting arbitration is that one of the benefits of arbitration is that a party can be able to recover the majority of its costs. So the majority of institutional rules empower tribunals to apportion the costs depending on who, who prevailed in the arbitration. If uh, the respondent, for example, was uh, deploying a number of guerrilla tactics to delay the proceedings, it, one way of an adverse inference is to, is to order the respondent, for example, to bear the entire costs. So the tribunal has the power to see who will bear the costs of the arbitration. The winning party usually gets, you know, it, it, it's, it's usually um, costs follow the event. And the prevailing party gets the majority of the costs depending on if they prevailed on all their claims or most of their claims or a few of them. And it's a win-win situation because we've seen cases where uh, we've been involved and we've uh, managed to, uh, to get all the legal fees that the clients has paid to us uh, confirmed in the final award as being reimbursed. Can you take me through as now I'm a client, I'm coming uh, to you at Habib Mullah law, uh, law Firm. And uh, when you will direct me to go to a litigation, to courts, and when you direct me to arbitration? I think the first thing I would want to know is to hear from you more. I would look at the contract. This is, this is, the, this is the go, uh, the starting point. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we're, we, we follow what the, the parties have agreed. So the first thing is that I want to understand what's the issue about and then understand what the dispute resolution is. And why, while it may seem as an easy you know, way out in, in practice, the complexity comes is that we see a lot, a lot of problematic, problematic arbitration uh, or dispute resolution clauses. Very pathological uh, clauses that are not uh, operable, clauses that provide for litigation and arbitration at the same time, clauses that provide for arbitration institutions that do not exist um, so a lot of issues can come along that way. So having a great and, and, and well-drafted arbitration or dispute resolution clause saves a long way. And that's why we always advise clients that if at the negotiation stage, make sure you consult with your lawyers to ensure that your, what, what we call the midnight clauses, the clauses that you forget, you know, until the last minute, they become the most important clauses when the dispute arises. And only then they discover, oh my God, how did I agree to this clause? It's not even working. What's this institution? It doesn't exist. So giving, giving it some time at the beginning uh, really serves a long uh, way. Okay. And how do you think, or how do you rate the, the awareness of the clients for arbitration nowadays? They, they still like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or now they are more aware? What did you do for the challenge of... I know everyone like mess the client the arbitration clause and the seat of the arbitration and they don't know more about it. Is it still challenging like before? The majority of clients are now even small companies that they need, they need to have one idea or another about uh, arbitration. I mean, as you said, uh, everyone is now publishing uh, everywhere. So even if uh, even if someone is not really specialized about arbitration, just making a Google search is uh, can give someone an idea about the basics. Of course, not all uh, not all the procedural aspects and, and technicalities of it. But um, there are since instances where clients, for example, uh, are not very aware about the procedure itself. And this is where we, we get to get involved early on. We try to help them out at the negotiation stage. We try to understand what the nature of their business is and then see what type of clause 
is suitable. Because not all clauses, not every arbitration will provide, for example, a seat in Dubai or a seat in Egypt. For example, if the debtor is based in London, so maybe you would want to name uh, the English courts or England as the seat of uh, arbitration because this is eventually where you will want to enforce your award in, where the debtor's assets are. So that's why we always say there needs to be a harmony between the business people at the client's side, the in-house counsels and the, uh, and the private lawyers or the private practice lawyers. Have you ever had any cases in front of exit yet? Well, at the moment, I used to have in the past when I was in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. But in Dubai, at the moment, no, there isn't much. Uh, because usually, cases involving at an exit level, the government uh, gets involved quite quickly and they try to settle. And even if cases are not really at an exit le level, any cases against the government generally, there is a process where clients try to negotiate and not go into the, the a huge battle of, uh, of enforcement and, and, uh, and nullification. Like they don't really um, quarrel and fight a lot at the enforcement stage. They just try to settle it. If there is an investor, it just closes out uh, amicably okay. once an award is out. Perfect. And this will take me, do you really advise your client maybe to start before going to arbitration to try to settle or do a mediation? Sometimes we do especially if we're stuck in an arbitration clause and the, and the claim amount is very small. And very small, of course, like we cannot just, uh, w w saying very small can be subjective. I can find it small, you can find it large. But we usually see, depending on the nature of the case itself, whether it makes sense to pursue a fully-fledged arbitration and incur costs that would, if not go get closer, can even go above and beyond your claim amount. So this is where we try and settle. This is where we try and say, no, why don't you go back and just reflect and see how you can strengthen your, uh, your position. Sometimes in cases where we know the, the client will not be able to um, sustain a fully fledged uh, arbitration, we uh, propose that they appoint an expert, an expert to confirm someone independent to come along and say, yes, you know, we've looked at the contract. We do agree that you're entitled to this amount and they use it, the client uses it as leverage in settlement negotiations. Okay. And what we call the expert who do that? Is it in the ADR? Is it mediation? It depends. It depends. Again, there are, there are contracts, for example, like FIDIC, that name and where we call multi-tier dispute resolution clauses, where they say go to DAB, for example, go to the dispute adjudication boards, which are a committee a comprising of uh, experts from the construction field. So they, they already have the technical background. So there are contracts that dictated, depending on the industry you're in, and there are contracts that just, you know, they don't really... They don't talk about experts, but we nominate them. We we know experts that were that are you know top-notch experts in the market in a certain field, and we uh, propose them to to give an objective opinion, an independent analysis about the strength, the technical aspects of the dispute, not the legal. The legal, of course, we cover, but in construction claims, for example, there's a lot of technicalities involved, a lot of uh, programming, project delays, uh, overheads. Uh, so these are all uh, elements where you would want the, an objective uh, expert to, to come along and give an independent analysis. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> going for, uh, for your role as a head of arbitration department and a team, uh, I want to know more about how the dynamic of Habib Mullah arbitration teamwork, how you lead your team, uh, how you take role in the initiative of, of arbitration. Like I can see you, uh, as we said before, in London is between and Riyadh is between and, and all places speaking, publishing, writing, and that come at a cost of a time. And now it's, it's not billable doing uh, articles and, and having a lot of um, uh, seminars and talks and that come with a cost. Why this is important and why uh, you and your firm encourage us and, and what the idea of all of that? Sure, maybe I can start with the first part of uh, your question about how, how our team is uh, at Habib Al Mullah. So we have a very diverse team, team from common law, from civil uh, law. We have our team members uh, sit as counsel, sit as arbitrator, and also our professors in law. So we have a very uh, knowledgeable uh, team of, of experts really in, uh, in the field. The other thing is that we're very uh, diverse in what we do. Like we, we do all sorts of different uh, 
commercial arbitration disputes uh, from shareholders to construction, real estate, maritime, IP. So we have a very broad range of all of that. And what we do as well, and I think it's uh, it's one of the, the strengths of our department, is that we possess very in-depth knowledge of, uh, of the local law. So, of course, we work under the, uh, the leadership of, of uh, Dr. Habib Al-Mullah, who himself is an authority in the field. So, um, being and, and in an environment where we know that we can serve clients both on the local laws as well as on, on, on their commercial dealings and giving them the pragmatic and the commercial solutions that they look for is something that we, we always do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, at, uh, within the team. Okay. And I'm very interested to know the different perspective, maybe for the clients. I don't want your own perspective. I don't know what you assume from the clients. Shifting from Baker McKenzie, you started Habib Mullah, then Baker McKenzie for 10, 12 years. Yes, 11 years. And being a partner in, in uh, Baker, Baker McKenzie. Yes. And after like a few months, months you, you, this happened, yes, and you, yes. and or fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe. Everything happens for a reason. Yes, yes. and now you are uh, the uh, at Habib Mullah law firm, a local firm. After 12 years in international firm, yes. and then back to a local firm with international standards. How do the clients see that? Especially in Dubai, most of the clients are uh, uh, international. And as you said f a few minutes ago, that being a local, understanding the, the laws is very important. Yes. How, how does this uh, shift affect your practice as an arbitration uh, group? So arbitration in, in and of itself is international. Okay. Um, so in, in terms of, of, um, of how it has impacted us, I think... The, the main answer to that would be that it's, it's not really, I wouldn't say it has impacted us as much as maybe we've, uh, we've shifted our focus in the market because the market is, as I said, very diverse. So everyone is there. You have the local clients, you have the regional clients, and you have the international clients. And clients themselves know who to go for and what, who are the people in the market who are the, the pioneers, for example, of a certain uh, industry dispute or, 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 who are, or who know very well certain aspects of the law or on the procedure, especially if they're going, if they need uh, the, the assistance of the local courts along with the arbitration. So um, I, I wouldn't really say that we've been heavily impacted as much as we had to change our focus. So we've been uh, with, with Baker McKenzie uh, uh, for like over 11 years. And the, and the clients who are there, the portfolio of clients was different than the portfolio of clients that we have now at Habib Al Mullah. We still have international clients with focus on uh, local laws because at the end of the day, their companies are based in Dubai. So they still, they still need the local expertise. So just to cut a long story short, we still work hand in hand. International firms in Dubai and local firms work together. We know, each one of us know where their strengths are. We, we go to them and they come to us as well. So no one can work uh, separately from the other or independently from the other. And I think this is why the government of Dubai itself is very diverse, is very diplomatic. It's, it has its door, doors open to all types of uh, law firms, international, regional, local, boutique firms. So it's very diverse in that sense. Very sure answer and uh, very clear answer. <laughs> Very diplomatic as well. But no, it, but it, it's it is really the, case. the honest one. It it's the a case, fact. Yes. Like everyone who wants to see the and check the, for themselves, they will see. It. And this is one of the things that we always uh, we're, we're proud about that Dubai is open to everyone. Yes. It's and what you're saying is that it will never be a competition between international and local firm. Like they always need each other. They to, need each to other. And it. even if there's a competition, it's in a healthy way. Like every already leaving aside the, the classifications of law firms. The legal field is already, in and of itself, very competitive. Yes. The lawyers are competitive. We're all learning from each other. We all want to keep track of all the legal developments, the, the judges, the laws. The, we were talking in the, in the, uh, in the conference uh, this week at the ICC about uh, technology, cryptocurrency, how AI is taking over. So the competition, we are forced to, to keep uh, ahead uh, of the curve, really, and to follow what's happening. 
Exactly. Worldwide. We can't we can't lie. It's it's a hunger game. Yes. But we in the Middle East, I think we'll do it in a very uh, good manners and yes. a very supportive manners. Like uh, yesterday at the ICC, like very competing firms, yes. very competing lawyers supporting each other. Exactly, and together coming and... from all over the world, different yes. backgrounds, different jurisdictions. And I think we all, it's great because arbitration, the nature of the arbitration itself is, is international, is diverse. So having all these people coming in one room, sharing their experiences, does nothing but to even uh, better enhance the, the field for all of us. Yes, yes, exactly. Like I like the idea of like, I support you today, I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm very happy to... Tomorrow I will kill you for the client, exactly, it's okay. Exactly. I will kill you in the case, but still we are friends and we're supporting each other for the betterment of the profession at all. You've touched upon a point about uh, going to speaking engagements and how, how do I go about it? It's all about the, the competitors that we're looking and we're saying, yeah, I have my, my colleague I know is in a different firm. They end, they end up supporting you. They end up inviting you to these uh, conferences. I was invited at the ICC, for example, because I, I have colleagues at the ICC. Yes, before. and why that? Even your firm uh, do a lot of events in the arbitration week, and you invite many competitors yes. in different places to be speak in your own events in, in Dubai Arbitration Week, for instance. And you do a lot of writing, and writing that is not available. It takes a lot of time yes. traveling to different places. Why? The arbitration group and Habib Mollelo firm is investing in, in such, uh, uh, I see, a pursue or... Uh, yes. In the, in what, what's, such... the, what's, what's the effect that will help the society, the client? Yes. So as we said, the market is very competitive. So there is a struggle at every level for someone or for anyone to really define their unique selling point. So we're all lawyers and we know that you've, you have great lawyers all over the market, everywhere. But what you want to serve clients who are as well very competitive on the other hand is you want to show them what service you can give them. What's your unique selling point that not, all, not any other lawyer can be able to make it. So going back to articles, yes, they do spend, uh, they, they require a lot of time, a lot of uh, energy and that, that are not billable, but it's part of the investment. It's part of telling the client, keeping them aware of, you know, I'm there and I can add value. And clients read and they follow. They can tell what, what, what value you're giving. If you're posting something on LinkedIn, you can keep on sharing and posting and just, you know, not, not giving any form of your own perspective on the matter. What we've learned is that if you're going to share something on LinkedIn, make sure, make sure you, you put your own perspective on it. Because who are on LinkedIn? Your colleagues are on LinkedIn who, who are also equally uh, very qualified in their field and they're, they're members of uh, arbitration institutions. They end up, if they know that you know a certain topic or you've reported on a certain judgment, they will say, oh, you know, I remember I saw an article from uh, Sally or from Sara or from Fatma. You know, it's, it's, it's a small market and we all support each other. And given the, as I said, the international tendency of not only promoting and supporting females, it's, it's all of us supporting the younger generation together. So we know each other and you stand out by making the effort of showing how you can add value. Not saying, oh, I'm working at Habib Al Mullah, oh, I'm working, you know, in Dubai and that's it. So what? So what? You know, it's not about that. It's about what value you can serve. What, what's, what's, your, what, what, what's your unique selling point? It is really the unique selling point. That's the, the phrase that you need to keep in mind. The unique selling point. Yes. And what's yours? What's my unique selling? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so you're, it's, it's a tricky one now. Uh, the unique selling point, and I wouldn't say about, about me personally, I would say as a firm, uh, generally, uh, whether being at uh, Baker McKenzie or at Habib Al Mullah, I think how it was, uh, or what we used to always say is that we have the very strong local expertise and knowledge. So we know, we know the ins and outs of the, the major developments in the law. We are involved in the drafting of legislations. We have very close connections with, uh, with judges uh, on the, in the context of the cases that we are bringing before and the court. And how does it help? It helps in bringing the presidents, making sure that you're able to understand and keep, uh, keep track of what the legal developments are. So knowing that there is a certain legal issue 
that the court has dealt with in a certain manner and that, that not, all the, not all court judgments are published, for example. So having this first-hand exposure and access, the other thing is that showing that you have the industry experience, that you understand the business of the client. When you have a lot of great lawyers, the, 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 the clients themselves can open the law and read what the law says, but it's not that. It's about how you apply it in practice. What has been your experience throughout the years? How can you prevent that client from getting into trouble, from avoiding a, a fully fledged arbitration procedure? How you can help them out? So it's understanding the client's business, being on, a, on, on a, as we say, like from heart to heart, really getting, a, getting to know the client, getting to even personally connect with the client. We're, we're all humans at the end of the day. So get, building this form of gravitas is, uh, is important, uh, showing that you're not only saying, I'm a lawyer, I'm great, I know this, I have 10 years of experience, but yeah, I've had, how do you translate it? So I have 10 years of experience, how does that, what does that translate, it, it translate into? It translates into a very in-depth understanding of the law, it translates into being able to provide pragmatic solutions to clients, it prevents to being, if, I, if we're being involved early on, we're able to avoid the entire company from entering into a very long and expensive dispute resolution process. So thinking about what your characteristics are and how you translate them into adding value and benefiting the, right. the clients. Kaysari, thank you. I would like to um, conclude our session with a few messages from you. I want a message from you to the younger generation. I want a message from you to the arbitration or the dispute resolution uh, society or community. And I want a message from you to your clients. To your clients? Okay, your so, clients, which yeah. so who should, should I start with? The... Start with whatever you see. I'll start that's... with the younger generation. Okay. And of course, I would love to, if you have a message for your mentors, uh, maybe people you like through the way, it's time for messages now. Okay, so, okay, so message, uh, one message I would give to the younger generations. I would say, believe in yourself, work hard, be committed, and have the passion all the way. And never let anyone to let you down. Never let anyone to tell you that you can do it. You can, like everyone else did. So just be, you know, after your dreams until the very end. And uh, know that at the end of the day, everything will fall into play once you've proved yourself, once uh, you've uh, also established your, your profile in the market by not only being in a, in a great firm, but also showing how you can add value to the community, try as much as you can to also um, keep ahead of, of legal developments. If you can, even in a very short uh, time throughout the week to try and publish something in your name, even on LinkedIn. I think, I think at this uh, point in time, publishing hasn't become a problem anymore or is no longer a problem like we used to have before that we used to need to go to certain publications you can now ha publish on all sorts of different uh, social media platforms so take advantage of that and uh, always remember that you need to you'll never be able to make it without your team so make sure you be a good team member so and what's your message to the let's say the dispute resolution community or society internationally or globally, the people you meet in the events and the conferences and you ride together and you work together and you, you fight uh, together. And... Yes, indeed. Um, so in terms of the message I would give to the international arbitration community, I would say that you're already doing a great job. A, a lot uh, of, uh, of policies, of initiatives uh, on diversity, on uh, promoting uh, greener arbitrations, uh, in, in promoting technology, as well institutions and all the help uh, that they're offering in terms of uh, um, developing their own uh, arbitration rules and even governments and, and courts. So I think all the arbitration community are working hand in hand to support and to promote arbitration and to make it easier on the on the users to uh, to go to and to consider arbitration as a preferred method. So my message is really continuing doing that, uh, continue to do that. You're doing already a great job. and. Uh, the other, the other final point I would say, just uh, continue in the spirit of uh, of collaboration. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sally, Thank for uh, being here with us today. Thank you. Your, uh, I think this sit down is very interesting, and it will be very interesting for all young females and Thank you. Uh, pursuing arbitration, especially as you mentioned a lot. It's not uh, easy for. Uh, 
we won the arbitration site to be more diversified. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yes, for the clients, it was very enlightening. It was very simple and simplifying. Thank, thank you very so much for uh, coming to uh, Cairo. Thank you. And, and thank uh, you for having me. It was really an honor for me. Thank you for your time and for your team as well, for yeah. everything and for all your hospitality and patience. Thank you, Sally. It's my thank pleasure. You. And uh, looking forward to see you in London this week. Yes. Indeed. And I'm looking forward to listen to your talk. Thank you so much. And okay. one final thing, I'm truly grateful for the very special mm -hmm. gesture and for the special mug. So thank you so much for doing that. You truly thank warmed you. my heart. Pleasure, thank you so thank much. You.